For thousands of years, man has gazed in wonder upon the northern wilderness. We ponder its beauty, share in its abundance, and try to unlock its secrets. When Steve Cook first wrote The Legend of Michigan's Dog Man in 1987, he thought he was creating a fun April Fool's prank for a radio show. He had no idea he was opening the door to a mystery and revealing a creature many people believe exists. In the years since the song first played on the radio, hundreds of witnesses have come forward telling remarkable stories of their own encounters with a creature very much like the one described in the song. Honest, sincere people with nothing to gain and much to lose. Some of them brought evidence, including photographs and film. You are about to see a detailed analysis of some of that evidence. We've assembled a team of experts from various fields to examine these items and offer opinions. When evidence has a reasonable explanation from the known world, or is clearly a forgery, we will tell you. Otherwise, we will leave the decision up to you. Terry Pressman is a film specialist and was an independent consultant to Eastman Kodak Laboratory for several years. Jordan Anderson is a certified Photoshop expert with lengthy experience in photo manipulation software and techniques. Andrew Easling is a retired naval officer who spent several years working as a photo analyst for various intelligence services. Carmen Blades is a veterinarian and holds a master's degree in wildlife biology. Russ Parks is a retired professional hunting and fishing guide with over 40 years experience in the wilderness of Washington State, Colorado, Minnesota, and Michigan. This photograph was originally a Polaroid image taken in the summer of 1968 on the Garden Peninsula in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Dee McHale of Cincinnati was camping with her sister in the area and had taken the Polaroid with her to record some of the scenery. One afternoon, she was watching as a group of deer emerged from the woods near their campsite. Intending to snap a picture of them, her eye was instead drawn to the right where a large black dog trotted into view on all fours. While she peered through the viewfinder, she was amazed when the dog stood upright and appeared to size up his chances of stalking the deer. He stood there rock steady for at least two minutes, she wrote later. The deer spotted him and ran off. He went back on all fours and trotted back in the direction from which he had come. Since this image originated on Polaroid stock, it would be very difficult to use modern manipulation techniques to create a composite image. We asked Terry Pressman to evaluate the image. His report states, There is nothing to indicate that overlays or airbrushing were used in this image. It appears to be a genuine and original photograph of an animal in a meadow. But what kind of animal? Hunter Russ Parks believes it could be a wolf, as they occasionally will stand on hind legs when stalking prey, although he's never heard of one standing for more than a few seconds. The Beast of Seven Shoots photograph has caused quite a controversy among researchers. It was taken in 2005 by a construction worker who was sightseeing in the park of Seven Shoots in Quebec. 
He did not notice the creature when he snapped a picture of one of the waterfalls with his Canon digital camera. While looking through the photos at home that same day, he was surprised to see the creature standing in the woods looking up at him. Some think the creature looks like a variation of Bigfoot. Others believe it has an elongated snout like a dog. And a few think it's nothing more than a trick of light in the foliage. What is most striking about the image is that it appears the creature is carrying something under its arm, like a baby pig or perhaps a deer. Our photo experts independently analyzed the Beast of Seven Shoots photograph. All agree it has not been altered in any way and that it appears to depict a solid mass rather than an optical illusion. Our wildlife experts could not identify the creature as any known animal. This image was sent to us through a neutral third party. The photographer wishes to remain anonymous. The photo was allegedly shot in 2002 from the back porch of a hunting cabin near Vanderbilt, Michigan. Since this image arrived as a JPEG digital file, we asked Photoshop expert Jordan Anderson to evaluate it. His report states, there are several red flags in this image. The lines of edge definition of the rocks and trees are all very soft, almost blurry, yet the creature appears sharp. Also, the creature has a hazy, almost translucent texture, and even though the animal appears to be walking behind the tree, there is a faint shape of his lower torso in the trunk of the tree itself. I believe this image to be a composite. A bit of research on the internet turned up a similar photograph, a promotional still taken from a British werewolf film entitled The Dog Soldiers, which was coincidentally released in 2002. Our conclusion? This image is a forgery. This image surfaced in the late 80s as a 35 mm negative. It was converted to a digital image in 2006. The shot was taken in the Waterloo Recreation Area near Chelsea, Michigan. Several teenagers camping there had heard strange noises and growling in the night near their tent, and the next morning discovered these enormous dog tracks. But unlike the normal prints of a dog walking on all fours, these tracks were evenly spaced as though the dog was walking on two legs. To provide a sense of scale, one of the young men placed his hand near one of the paw prints for this photo. Assuming his hand to be of average size for an adult male, the dog track is roughly seven inches in diameter. Veterinarian Carmen Blades estimates an animal with paws that size would weigh somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 pounds. All three photo experts agree this image has not been manipulated in any discernible form. This startling image was shot near Onaway, Michigan in 2004. The photographer was a young man seated in the back seat of a minivan. He and his parents had been visiting relatives who had been deer hunting that same day and had gutted two bucks alongside the driveway. As they went to their car to depart, they heard a low rustling noise and saw movement in the area of the entrails. When they backed up to turn around, the reverse lights illuminated what appeared to be a large dog or wolf. The young man grabbed his digital camera and snapped this image. When they arrived home and reviewed the photos, they were shocked to discover that the animal appeared to be standing upright behind a stump or other obstruction, assuming a classic threatening posture. Photo analysts Jordan Anderson and Terry Pressman both examined this image. Their viewpoints are split. 
Anderson sees evidence of some digital manipulation, including brush strokes near the arms of the creature, the odd vertical white streak near the lower part of the body, and the disproportionately large head of the animal. Pressman, on the other hand, believes the image to be genuine. He states that the alignment of light sourcing is nearly perfect when one considers the flash reflections on the interior panels of the car and the cast of light on the animal. Pressman believes the brush strokes are caused by motion, not manipulation. He also points out that no amount of contrasting or filtering of the image can produce evidence of layering or a composite. The Gable film is a striking piece of evidence that is as puzzling as it is complex. It turned up in a box of odds and ends at an estate sale in 2004. The film was in extremely degraded condition when it was delivered to Steve Cook in 2006. Our film experts believe the state of the film shows it may have spent several years outdoors exposed to the weather. The film itself is standard 8mm Kodachrome from stock manufactured in the early 1970s. It was shot with a Bell & Howell autoload camera circa 1966, as seen here reflected in a mirror during one sequence. The snowmobiles at the beginning of the film are 1960s and 1970s vintage. The truck shown is a 1967 Ford. It has significant rust on the left front fender. These elements bring us to the conclusion the film was probably shot in the mid to late 1970s. To enhance the film, our experts reproduced each individual frame using state-of-the-art equipment. This resulted in over 3,000 individual images. Each image was then pixel-enhanced and color-corrected, using extreme care not to add or subtract anything from the original context. The three-and-a-half-minute film is largely basic home movie material. About two-thirds of the way through, the camera perspective moves to the inside of a moving vehicle. As the camera person pans the roadside, it suddenly picks up an animal moving across the field. For the next 23 seconds, a chase ensues through woods and fields. Then the camera spots the animal once again, standing on a ridge about 150 feet away. For the first few seconds, the creature and cameraman study each other. Then, suddenly, the creature charges. The cameraman attempts to flee, but his speed is no match for the predator chasing him. Our first impression of the Gable film was that it was a hoax, an amateur, scary movie project that turned out better than expected. The enhanced version of the film brought out detail not visible in the original, however, and forced us to reevaluate our position. Watch closely and you'll understand why. The creature begins his charge by moving sideways in a commando style crawl. At one point, a very human looking leg and foot appear in the right side of the frame. Then, the creature makes a sharp left turn. Two things stand out here its body seems to expand rapidly changing into a near gorilla shape. But the strangest aspect is the creature's right rear leg, which seems to actually change shape and structure. In this frame, it appears as a feeble L shape, bent awkwardly inward. And just a few frames later, it looks precisely like a dog's leg. As the creature accelerates forward, he lunges powerfully, leaving the ground with all four feet. 
We've challenged several very athletic people to attempt to run on their hands and knees and leap in this fashion. None could reproduce this movement. We can only speculate what happened next. Does the Gable film or any of the evidence shown in this documentary prove the existence of a half-man, half-dog creature? They do not. Cumulatively, however, these images do show that the dog-man may not be a myth. What we know for certain is that for hundreds of years people have had experiences with unusual creatures in the northern wilderness. To these witnesses, the encounters were very real and sometimes very frightening. In the final analysis, the question of whether the dogman exists or not is up to you. <laughs>